All right. Let's start by talking about graphs. And we're going to specifically start the starting by talking about some properties of these graphs. Let's uh, start the starting of the starting with example one. Given the graph of f of x equals 2 to the x below, graph g of x, which equals the log base 2 of x. So the problem is going to give you some graph and uh, Hmm. Say the graph looks like this. And say this graph is counting by twos. Two, four, six, eight, ten, like so. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Like so. And I'm giving you the graph of two to the x. Two to the x starts, or let's color code this. 2 to the x starts at 1, which is right here. And then when x is equal to 1, y is equal to 2, and then it keeps on doubling, and then it keeps on doubling. Like so, 2 to the x. Looks like this. Well, Logarithms are just the inverses of exponentials. So remember that if we have a graph of a function, we can graph its inverse, right? G of x is just f inverse of x. We can graph an inverse by just switching all the x's and the y's. So right, what points do we have on this graph for f? We have the point 0, 1. We have the point 1, comma 2. We have the point 2, comma 4. We have the point 3, comma 8, right? 2 to the x. The input is the exponent, and the output is 2 raised to that exponent. Well, if we want to graph the inverse, right? Inverses are all about switching x's and y's. So these are points on the inverse function. Switch those x's and those y's. One zero is right here, two comma one, four comma two, and eight comma three. And then you connect them all in the same way. And again, we have an asymptote. Oh, this is what the graph of a logarithmic function looks like. Remember that the graph of an inverse function can also be seen as just the reflection across this diagonal line. Right? F inverse is just a reflection across this diagonal line, y equals x. So the logarithm graph is just the same as an exponential graph, just reflected. All right, so anytime in this whole section, right, this whole section we're talking about graphs of logarithmic functions, it all boils down to inverses. If you know exponents and you know inverses, then there's nothing new here, really. Okay, so let's look at some properties here. Some properties of this stuff. Well. Let's look at the domain. Uh, hold on, hold on. Let's look at some properties for the exponential function and for the logarithmic function. So let's look at 2 to the x and log base 2 to the x. F and G. And yeah, let's look at the domain. Let's look at the range. Let's look at uh, the equation of the asymptote. What other properties do we want? End behavior? I don't know if these will all fit, um, but let's try. So the domain of an exponential function, remember we said in 6.2, 
the domain of any exponential function is just all real numbers. Okay. The domain of our exponential function is also going to be all real numbers. What does that say about the range of the inverse? Remember the dom... Ah, there's... Ah, okay. Wait, hold on. I'm having some issues. My, uh... The domain of a function is the range of its inverse. Likewise, we can look at this blue graph. The range is the set of all the y values. Notice that on this graph, we can go as far down as we want. And as far up as we want, too. It's going to take a while, but we can get as high as we want. Just like the domain in the red graph. So what was the range of the red graph? The range is all the y values. Well, that was 0 to infinity. So that tells us the domain of its inverse function. The domain of one function is the range of its inverse and vice versa. Domain's going to be an important one. We can only plug in positive numbers. That's a big takeaway. This, this page is getting a little cluttered. But you can only plug in positive numbers to logs. That's going to be a big deal later. What about the asymptote? The asymptote is this horizontal line. This is the x-axis, the line y equals 0. Well, another thing about inverse functions is inverse functions are all about switching the x's and the y's. Well, if we literally switch x and y, this asymptote becomes x equals 0. Right, for exponential functions, the asymptote was always at the edge of the range. Right? If this is zero, then that's a zero. And the range is a bunch of y values. So this is also a y value. Well, this is the same thing for domain. This zero, the asymptote is always going to be at the edge of the domain now, not the edge of the range. And the domain is x values, so the asymptote will also be x equals for that vertical line. That vertical line that's right here. That's our asymptote to the blue graph. What's the end behavior? <laughs> that's, that's not going to fit on here. End behavior says as x goes to the right, the function also goes off to infinity. And as x goes to the left, as x approaches negative infinity, the function approaches the asymptote, which is 0. And you can do the same thing, switch those x's and those y's, and get the end behavior for log. <sighs> That's basically everything, in this, everything you need to know for this video in one giant clustered page. Let's work with this a little bit with example 2. Find domain, the range, the asymptote, and the end behavior. We've used these abbreviations before. I'm using them again for the following. Part A, f of x equals log base 2 of x plus 3. All right, well, let's just copy down what Jason said before. The domain is all positive numbers. Why is this wrong? How have I made a mistake here? Well, I said that logarithms, we can only have logarithms on the, or positives on the inside of a logarithm. But what's the inside of the logarithm? Well, now it's more stuff. So this is not the domain here. Graphically, what's happening? Function transformations. We're adding three to the inside of the function. We're moving this whole thing left three units. So it's not going to be zero to infinity anymore. 
going to be negative 3 to infinity. Function transformations, 3.5 coming back again. Or you could just say, all right, we need the inside to be positive. So X plus 3 has to be positive. When's that going to happen? When X is bigger than negative 3. And again, domain, thinking forward to um, like combining everything from this course, domain of a fraction, we couldn't divide by zero. Domain of a radical needed to be greater than or equal to zero for the inside. And logarithms is the inside is strictly greater than zero. So three things that are popping up for domains in this class that all look a little different. What's the range? The range of any logarithm is all real numbers. I don't care what you do with this blue graph. Any transformation you can possibly do to this blue graph, the range is still going to be all real numbers. Just like with an exponential, the domain was always all real numbers. Asymptote. Asymptote is always at the edge of the domain. So for exponential functions, it was always y equals the edge of the range. For logarithms, it's always x equals the edge of the domain. You can remember because x's have to do with domains. And this is at the edge of the domain, so it's x equals negative 3. And the end behavior, it might be easiest to graph this one. Or you could uh, do the same thing that we kind of skipped in the last one. But it's going to have the same shape. So, as x gets really, really big, goes to the right, the function value gets really, really big. And x can't go to negative infinity, right? There's an asymptote. x can only go to negative 3 from the right. And as it does so, the function is going to approach negative infinity. And it's a very good idea to check this graphically. Log base 2 of x plus 3. Log, use an underscore. That's shift, and then the key that's to the right of 0. Log base 2, tab over, parentheses, x plus 3. And then hit the gear icon. Let's get our interval right. Let's look like negative 5 to 5. And then maybe negative 10 to 5 or something like that. Make sure to always put your, your intervals, your region, your scale here, so that you can actually see the graph. So you can see that asymptote. It's at x equals negative 3, right? We get really close to this, but we never actually hit it. And you can see that the domain is indeed everything to the right of negative 3. You can see the range is going to be all real numbers. Um, you can see uh, the end behavior, right? As x goes to negative 3 from the right-hand side, we're shooting down. As x goes to the right, we're going up. You can see all the things that we just commented on right here in this graph. And again, logarithms are weird because it gets flatter and flatter, but it really does get as big as we want. You just have to go, I'm going to have to go really, really far. Just like an exponential function, right? An exponential function gets really, really steep, but there's no vertical asymptote in exponential functions. It's the same idea. Let's do part B. G of x equals log base 1 half 5 minus 2x. We haven't really done much with fractional bases of logs. Just to kind of like go off to the side. Let's explore that. What we haven't done much of this. Log base two of x. Again, let's reset. Reset our scale. This is what log base two looks like. What does log base one half look like? Log base 
Oh, is Desmos not going to like this? Who Desmos might not. Log base one half of X. Oh. Huh. What's the relationship between log base two and log base a half? They're reflections. Reflections across the x-axis. In fact, log base one half of x is just negative log base two. All right, you add that negative and they become the same one. This is just a vertical, uh, vertical reflection or reflection about the x-axis. All right, so let's just follow the same steps for the domain. We need the inside of the logarithm to be positive. Cannot plug in, cannot have negative numbers or zero on the inside of a logarithm. So subtract five from both sides, divide both sides by negative two, and be very careful when you divide both sides of an equation by negative two, the, the direction of that inequality changes. So the domain now is going to be everything to the left of five halves. The range is easy. The range of any logarithm is always going to be all real numbers. Asymptote, always at the edge of the domain. Asymptote is always at the edge of the domain, so the asymptote here is going to be x equals positive five halves. And for the end behavior, there are ways of doing this without a graph, but let's just graph it, okay? Let's log base one half. We'll write it as 0.5. Desmos wants that 0.5. 5 minus 2x. <laughs> Whoa. 5 minus 2x like so. All right, so we can see that's uh, 5 halves. That's 2.5. We can see that asymptote here. So the end behavior says, as we get to five halves from the left, we shoot off to positive infinity. All right? As x approaches five halves from the left, the function approaches infinity. And as x goes to the left, what happens? Remember, there's no asymptote. Whoa. There's no asymptote. As we go to the left, it actually is shooting off to negative infinity. As x goes to negative infinity, the function also goes to negative infinity. And it's kind of, it's, it's hard to see. It's hard to believe, right? But let's look. Let's make the x-axis go to really big negative numbers. Negative 100. What about negative 1,000? It gets even lower. Negative 10,000, it gets even lower. Right? We can, we can get as low as we want. We're, look at how small x has to be. We have to go really far to the left. We have to go really far to the left to even get down to negative 17. That's, we're not very far down. We're really far to the left. <laughs> negative 90,000. <000. laughs> we only got down to negative 17. But I promise, it goes down as, as far as you want. Let's make the y-axis go to negative 30. How far are we going to have to go to get to negative 30? Let's just add a couple more zeros. Oh, what about negative 40? Add a couple more zeros. Oops. Oh, that wasn't a zero. We can get as low as we want. But <laughs> look how little x has to be. <laughs> look how small x has to be just to get negative 40. But that, that range really is all real numbers. All right. Okay. Uh, last thing I want to do in this section is, uh, is be done. Bye-bye. <laughs>